Hey guys, welcome back to the React interview question series. This is part four. And if you if you haven't watched all of them, please do so at the end of the series. I'll provide a link and they are all independent. So you can you don't have to watch them in any sequence. In this part, we're going to cover some very important questions. These are the questions where people usually stumble. Uh, you can memorize things like uh, the life cycle hooks and all that stuff. But this these are more higher level question where interview wants to find out how do you know react internally have you worked on a project and things like that so uh, i think this is probably one of the most important part of the series we will also cover some projects so let's say if you're given either uh, an exercise in, in on a phone interview or on-site interview or take home exercise uh, to do a project so we're going to cover a uh, different kinds and how to answer them and welcome Okay, here's our first question. How to optimize a React app? Now, this is a very abstract question. Interviewer hasn't given us any information about this particular app. It could be a very simple app to very complex app. So the first thing you need to do is ask questions. Oftentimes people make mistake by just start to answer uh, whatever they think, right? I think that will be a huge mistake. When you are given any abstract question, first try to find out the parameters. This is very important because interview is not only about answering the question, it's about communication. If you are given a problem uh, in a workplace, do you just go and do it or do you ask questions first? So first ask about the application. How big is this application? What does it do? Which version of React it's running? What do you mean by bad performance? If you wanna optimize something, you need to know what you are optimizing. Is it slow? Is it crashing? Uh, the bundle size is big. What is going on here? Let, and let them answer. They might simply say, you know, just consider any application and optimize it without even knowing it. In that case, you just have to guess. But otherwise, you can answer based on the what the application they described. So first thing I would do is, if it's performance related in terms of uh, speed, then I would say, okay, you need to first a profiler to an app and then run the app to see if uh, which areas of the app is behaving badly. Make sure you disable other plugins because uh, it can interfere in the performance. One of the biggest problem uh, with the speed could be you might be rendering components that are not supposed to be re-rendering. For example, if you uh, are not changing the state but you're still setting the same state over and over, that would update the virtual dome, but you don't need to do that. So as we looked at in the previous uh, videos, uh, you can stop the re-rendering of certain components by using should component update lifecycle method, or if you have a newer version, you can use React Memo or React Pure Components. If your packet size is huge and is taking too long to load, uh, you can use lazy loading. So you can use uh, react lazy to lazy load certain routes that you the user may be using later on or may not be even using it you may find out your apis are slow so there may be some improvement needed on the server side that may be a bottleneck as well it's not always a react app is uh, slow it could be something else also maybe your uh, team is uh, inexperienced and some of them are using the wrong methods to update the state some of them may be updating uh, state directly instead of creating a, a copy of it. It is also uh, possible that your, all your assets are loading slowly. Uh, a lot of time, if you have videos and images in your application, then they, they may be loading slowly because of the location where these assets are stored. And uh, you can easily find out in the pro a profiler that, okay, that is the case. In that case, you probably have to use a different strategy on the server side. Inside your application, you may be using present uh, for the presentational components, like buttons and things like that. You may be using classes. Uh, if you make them functions, that may improve your application as well. 
for class uh, property functions like uh, those event handlers, you may be using uh, regular functions and binding them inside a constructor. Uh, that also can slow things down. So for those, if you use error functions, that might improve it. And you can tell uh, the interviewer that there are some external packages also available that would analyze uh, your application speed and tell you what's going on. There's no silver bullet answer for this. Uh, oftentimes, interviewers are stuck on uh, a particular answer in their mind, and if they don't get that answer, they may reject you for that, which is fine because I think you can't satisfy everybody, but you do your best to answer this question. All right, so the, now we look at why would somebody ask this question. If you are applying for a senior position, this is a very important question because they want you to come in and start running the project. Uh, you know all the tricks in the books. They wanna find out how much deep knowledge of React you have, uh, what kind of project you worked on. Can you solve their problems? Uh, why shouldn't you ask this question? If you're interviewing a junior, junior guy uh, who just came out of the college, I think asking this question may not be appropriate because they may not have done the performance tuning. Okay, so the next question is, explain virtual dome. Again, this is also a bit abstract question. Basically what they are asking is, do you know the internals of how React updates dome and why virtual dome is used? So I would start with something like this, that how to update a dome efficiently, that's been an old age old question, you know, everybody was, everybody was trying to solve this question before React came along with Virtual Dome. And React came up with a brilliant idea of Virtual Dome. And what is the problem exactly they're trying to solve? So updating the Dome is really expensive because every time you update something, you have to repaint that on the Dome every time. And that can be time consuming. So basically there are two solutions. Make it faster, uh, the Dome updates, and update as less as possible. And React's uh, Virtual Dome solves both problems. So what the React actually does, it has its dome tree of its own, which it creates during the initial render, uh, which is called the Virtual Dome. And any updates to the tree happens through the change in state and props. And as I said, there is no uh, simple answer to this. Based on your answer, uh, interviewer could dig deeper and try to find out what exactly really happens. Explain to me, uh, how it works during uh, all the lifecycle hooks and whatnot, and you have to answer it. Why would somebody ask this question? Well, again, it's very important. If you know React, you should know Virtual Dome and how it really works. And I would even recommend, you know, just going into React library and see how it really updates the Dome, how we check if something is dirty or not. Uh, why would you not ask this question? Again, if you are a junior, junior guy, you may not answer correctly, but it's fine. Uh, but I think even junior guys should know because if you if you claim to know that you know React, you should know this answer. Okay, now let's move to a very important topic, projects. Not all React interviews are just Q&A. You may have to code. There are categories of questions they can ask. So let's go through them one by one. One of the common thing uh, interviewer would do is if they would give you a program that has some sort of error. They would give you a computer and said, and would say, okay, can you fix this for me? They want to know your debugging techniques. So here are some of the things you need to look for. There may be some handlers that are not bound properly to the class. Uh, state may not be updating properly, or there may be some typo sometime. So you need to go through step by step to actually debug this. Console as much as possible. So here's some do's and don'ts. First of all, when you're given something like this, carefully read the code first before doing anything. There are times when they, you don't even get to run. Uh, let's say if it's given you on a paper or on a board uh, where you have to find the problem. So you may not even get a chance to, to run it. It's possible that there are more than one issues ask questions okay what does what is the objective of this communicate during the uh, the whole process so that they know that 
what you're thinking and do not hurry. Second kind of project would be add functionality. So they would give you a project which is working most probably and they will ask you to add some more functionality to it. Basically extend it. A good example would be let's say if you're given a TikTok tic-tac-toe game which is already working except one part where they haven't uh, designed a, a, a functionality to check who's the winner. So you need to add that functionality. Or they can ask you, you know, this is a three by three matrix uh, instead of making four by four. You may need to uh, create a button to reset the game and something like that. And this is just a one example of, you know, you, they could be asking any application with where they would uh, ask you to add functionality. And games are pretty commonly asked questions. They're visual and you can see what's going on and they're simple oftentimes. So, so the do's and don'ts would be ask questions. I would start with design on a paper first. Uh, use paper and, and pen to draw your logic before start to code. And general rule of thumb is don't start coding until you know the solution. And to know the solution, you need to know the requirement. So ask all kind of questions to find out what exactly they want to do. Okay, so the next kind of project they can give you is build it from scratch. Now, if it's, if it's an, uh, let's say if it's an on-site or even phone interview, uh, they would give you about an hour or so to build this. But you may not get the entire hour because, you know, uh, there might be five, 10 minutes to, to describe this and then five, 10 minutes to discuss this. So you may get maximum of like, let's say 40 minutes where you have to build the entire project from scratch. Most commonly asked project is to build a to-do list where you have to show the list, add item, remove item from it. You can easily build if you're hands-on with React, but it would become difficult if you haven't done much practice. In some cases, they might give you, uh, uh, you know, say, okay, you can use Google to do. Obviously, you cannot Google uh, the to-do app. So my suggestion is to start with a Create React app, which gives you the template to build the app. And here are some two do's and don'ts. So always divide the app into component. Even though this is an interview, they are looking for everything. Uh, a lot of people just put everything into app.js and looks unprofessional. Even if you finish this, you may not get, get the job because they don't think you're worthy of it. Uh, don't spend too much time into CSS by making it fancy, but it has to clean and functional. Uh, also use a modern syntax. So instead of binding class properties inside a constructor, use error functions and things like that. If you have time, uh, write some uh, test cases in jest. And again, if you if you do if you try this out, if you are preparing for an interview, I would suggest try this out at home. Build a simple to-do list application from scratch and time it. See how fast can you do it. There are some companies that would give you take-home projects. And this can be very comprehensive. Like they might want you to build a substantial amount of functionality from scratch. A lot of startups do that. That is because they want a people who are hardworking and then quick on their feet. They don't say no to any work. The objective of giving take-home exam is, let's say you are working, and most probably you are, and you get this project, and there is a, a timeline. So they say, okay, give it to me by tomorrow morning. So you have about, let's say, uh, eight to 10 hours or something like that, right? And then you have to build the entire app, maybe write some tests and everything, and make it pretty in that, 10 hours. Now they know you are working, so you may not have enough time. You may have family, kids, whatnot. And usually this, uh, this kind of things would take you at least four to five hours. And they want to find out if you can do that or not. And this is an interview. This is not real work. So if you cannot do that on side, maybe <laughs> pulling extra hours, then you won't, may not be fit for work. So it's a stress plus skill test. Now, what kind of projects you may get? You may you may get some visual design. So they may give you uh, some visual design 
where they gave you exact margins and paddings and all kind of stuff. Uh, and you need to follow them strictly. And there may not be much communication after that. You may ask questions initially, but after that, because it will be off work hours, you can't ask much questions. So they want to also find out how do you do independently. So my advice to you would be just do, as they say, pull extra hours, whatever you have to do, and finish the test. But remember, if you join that team, if you really get accepted, the work environment would be the same as the test. If you want to check out the entire series, if you haven't done so, I, I will provide a link here in the corner. And you can also check out my React series. I have a full React series if you haven't looked at it. I'll pro also provide a link here. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like. <laughs> Don't forget to like. Like, subscribe, and provide a nice comment. And you can translate this video for me. It's pretty easy. The information is in the description. And thank you.